before the information age brought about by you know the digital revolution if you want to think of it that way um again we had more centralized power structures more centralized institutions where bitcoin is just one that exists anywhere and everywhere uh, with any device connected to the internet you can you can um um participate in a protocol in the same way that you do over tcp ip because bitcoin just happens to be uh, a protocol like tcp ip uh, existing at a maybe a higher layer a higher layer tcp ip being here bitcoin can't exist without tcp ip but they're both protocols right so nobody can controls them as such um i in, in the new world that we're entering that we're already in uh to a great extent the um not only in terms of uh, trans transporting value across space, but also ideas, um, you know, Noster or even Mastodon, these are attempts at sort of replacing the, the centralized institutions like Twitter, even though Twitter is, of course, very centralized in the sense that, it, you know, your information exists on a company's servers and are, of course, shared with governments. But, um, but of course, Twitter tries to be a um, public square, um, where Mastodon, where the Mastodon and and um, and most of models allow free speech through a much more decentralized means, and I think there's a big push. The more the more governments and the central banks uh, see the the way that the masses, the public, pushes towards more decentralized models, the more they respond and say, "Oh, we can achieve those things in a better way uh, in a more centralized model." Uh, so to give just one example. Um, Bitcoiners will often uh, talk about uh, how it allows you to sort essentially thank the unbanked, right? Not not that you not that participating in the Bitcoin network actually banks you. There there is no bank, uh, but but it, it, um, it it's very it's it's highly it's the most egalitarian structure that you could come up with right you can just participate and as long as you have a private key you can spend the bitcoin right it's in a permissionless way there, there are no gatekeepers right um and the if you pay attention to the uh the political um arguments given by people promoting cbdc's they talk about banking the unbanked so they they use the same kind of lingo that bitcoiners do to promote a very the, the most decentralized monetary system that's ever existed and, and the the central bankers the bank of international settlements they talk about uh it, it can be it can be you bank the bank and we you know all this stuff but but they're promoting the opposite model it's highly centralized and, and it would allow them and they always say oh we wouldn't do that but it, it would allow them it, technically um to be able to censor people Right, you have you have to trust that they're not going to censor people. So uh, the implications are quite the opposite of Bitcoin, but they but they make sure because they they notice that if you say things like banking the unbanked, that it has a really nice feeling. So they make sure to a they wait. Right, it's their CBDCs, for example, are a very top down way to innovate. Right. I think in their own way, I don't think they're all nefarious. I think they want, some of them want to do actual good, right? I, I'm, I'm being, trying to be generous, right? Trying to be as realistic as possible. I don't I want to assume uh, uh, bad intentions necessarily, even though I suspect there are, there's a lot of that. <laughs> um, but they, yeah, they borrow the same open language, the, the same, um, yeah. I yeah. The point. Yep. No, I think that's a great point. And that's that is kind of what I was looking for because it does tie those two things in together. Like really like information uh and a monetary system are kind of inextricably linked, right? Like if you have a monetary system which suppresses people and censors people, like via C B D C, like the BIS has said it would be absolute control. Those were, you know, the words. Yeah absolute control so that means like that's how it's connected is that we are in this kind of information era uh which is driven by digital technology and that you know trickles out into money as well but on the other hand you have this increasing kind of um push for more and more centralization and that absolute control means that 
if you say the wrong things, then you also will not have access to your money uh, if that if that is played out to the point of absolute control. And Martin Gurry points to that in this book, The Revolt of the Public, um, because yeah. you can't have dissent in that kind of system, right? Like if right now we're seeing that struggle between the old world and the new world in a sense, and in the old world, you can't have a dissent. Like the, the opinion has to come from the top. And if you have a different opinion, well... That, that's that's just not allowed. That's right. That's right. So that's not to say that they will necessarily censor, but I don't know how they would resist. I don't know how they would come up with the the resistance to censor once they have that kind of control. Uh, and I, I don't buy that, oh, well, this is a democracy, so that's how we know it won't. I mean, um, you can look at op- Operation Choke Point that took place in the the latter part of the Obama administration. And if you were engaged in perfectly legal activities, such as manufacturing guns, which is perfectly mm-hmm. legal uh, uh, thing to do in the United States, uh, it's regulated, but it's legal. Um, if you if you were a um, payday lender or a whole host of other things, uh, they, they censored you not, they didn't infringe any constitutional rights, to my knowledge, by saying you can't say that or shut up or, or what, what have you, and they didn't take your business license away, to my knowledge. Uh, what they did was they wouldn't uh, talk to the banks and say, hey, wh- why are you banking Puerto Rico's? Why are you banking gun manufacturers? How do you think that looks for you? you know, do, you do you feel responsible for that school shooting over there? That, these kinds of things, uh, if you're, you're, you're uh, an enabler. You know? uh, so they, the, while Bitcoiners want to bank the unbanked, so to speak, um, governments seem highly interested in unbanking the banked, right? They find people who are banked, who they don't want to be banked, who they who, who they, they don't think should have all the same rights as the rest of us, and they work hard to make sure that those institutions or those people are unbanked. <laughs>